Francis, one of the first things that was looked at following that was the security, taking that step back to see what went right, what went wrong, what might need to be changed. I spoke with the security director here, Julie Harris, about everything that they looked at, and she has spent her life in law enforcement coming here several years ago. I'm going to take you inside St. Francis for how security has changed to prevent something like this from happening. Some days you sit and contemplate when you have nothing else to think about and you think about that day and you think about all the lives that were impacted. Um, but most of the time, I'm just here to do my job. Julie Harris spent nearly four decades in law enforcement serving in various roles within the Tulsa Police Department. Five years ago, she joined St. Francis as the security director, a job that opened her eyes. As a law enforcement officer, you expect people to not like you. You expect people to talk ugly to you. You expect them to possibly fight you, but coming to a healthcare facility, I did not expect that. These men and women are not treated with dignity and respect that I, you would expect. On June 1, 2022, it all became very real. A situation Harris is unfortunately no stranger to. I spent 33 years on the Tulsa Police Department. I was there on a lot of critical incidents. But this was close to home. This incident's on my mind every single day because I have officers present in the building that were there that day. I became very close to a lot of the employees that were over in the Natalie building and we stay in touch. The shooting at the Natalie building one year ago made her take a step back and reevaluate security measures, but doing so with the goal of keeping the hospital a place of healing. We want it to still be a, an area of, of caring and calm, but we also need people to know we're also going to be watching you. Security does that in various ways. Harris says everyone at the hospital has to check in and have a legitimate purpose for being there. So we still want the openness and the calming and the caring, but we're tightening things down by not letting everybody walk through anymore and go just shopping in the gift shop or walking down to the cafeteria and having a meal. She says that's just the way healthcare has become. Before I got here five years ago, it, it had just started the rippling effect. But now, healthcare systems across the country, you're seeing more and more people show up for no, for no good, no good reason. The hospital system has always had security measures in place, but now it's more amplified, starting with being more proactive. If I get a call or an email, and, and sometimes these are email threats that people get, if we get an email threat or a verbal or a physical or somebody's had an awful time with their physician, or a, even if they talk ugly to the housekeeper and the housekeeper reports it to us, we're getting on the front end of it and we're contacting them immediately. Harris says the goal is to be proactive instead of reactive. The hospital system is also testing body cameras on its guards. We're field testing them and then so this is a little bit different than working in with the police department because we have HIPAA laws we have to follow. So we have to be very careful. There's limited access to who can view these videos and, and, and the storage of them. The company that sells them to us has no access whatsoever. Those 90 covering the entire St. Francis system, having what Harris calls a deterrent right there on their body. The security team also has a mass text alert system to send information to those inside the buildings in an emergency. Security changes Harris hopes will look similar to patients but it is something seen by staff knowing her team is there for them. I think that, um, you know, the measures that we have taken, although I, I never felt unsafe coming into a shift in the emergency department, I think I, I, I know now I have constant reminders that somebody's looking out for me, somebody's watching, so um, that, that has changed. Dr. Ryan Parker is the Associate Chief Medical Officer for Yale Campus. She says there's also a renewed push to go through training. We had it available for people we required training before, but I think it made people want to do it, if that makes sense. Um, the de-escalation training, you kind of saw how important it was to be able to help somebody who was in crisis and kind of walk them down from strong emotions. And Tulsa Police Chief Wendell Franklin saying in the weeks after that shooting that it's impossible really to know exactly what would have happened in a situation like that. But he says in his mind, having those officers who initially did not hesitate went in most certainly did uh, save a lot of lives.